Catamount Racetrack in Milton, Vermont. Billed as the home of the brave, Catamount gives thousands of race fans a thrilling spectacle every Saturday night during the racing season. Last season, race fans witnessed a different sort of spectacle, and this is where it all happened. My name is Tom Riley with Vermont's Project Crash. Crash is part of a federal program designed to rid our nation's highways of the drunk driver. And we'd like to share this spectacle with you. Because if you're like most of us, you do drink and drive. Last summer, we selected volunteers from the audience here at Catamount Racetrack. Because we wanted to run it in front of 4,000 race fans on a Saturday night, we picked just five from the many who volunteered. This is the story of how those five people drove under the effects of alcohol. But before we get to the actual demonstration, let's meet our five drinking drivers. We first see them at a briefing session approximately 10 days before the big event. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I'm Darwin Merrill, and I'm the project director of Crash. In this state, driving above 0.10, or for my case, driving with more than six beers, is illegal. And we're, it's not known by the general public, one, how much it has to drink to get to that level, and secondly, what happens to your driving skills once you get to that level. And so we wanted to do two things. One, we want to demonstrate to the general public that driving above 0.10 does, in fact, degrade the dry hills. In other words, you don't drive so good after you've had a few drinks. And two, we want to put it on film because if, if it works and people can relate to you, and you, because you're volunteers, you're people who we don't know, but didn't know before, who raised your hand in the audience and said, I think I'd like to try this, might be able to show other people coming behind you that, it, that maybe it's a little risky if I drink six beers or so and attempt to drive. From here on in, the, the drivers learn that they will be asked to drive through a special course on the track while sober, then slightly impaired, and finally, impaired beyond the legal drinking driving limits. Each run will be scored so that each driver can be compared with himself as the alcohol in his or her bloodstream increases. Where you are before you drive each time. Yeah. You may not know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> we will know where you are. Assured that all aspects of the demonstration will be carried out with care and safety, the drivers signify their agreement by signing releases and receive the traditional one dollar bill to make it binding. Now let's get to know our drivers. Frank, like all our volunteers, is an avid race fan. He is a 27-year-old meat cutter who frequents a bar called the Annex in a town several miles from the track. Uh, how much scotch do you think we ought to bring along with us? Probably a fifth. Probably a fifth will do it. Uh, you usually drink scotch when you're out? Yeah. Uh, what do you drink at home? Scotch or vodka? Scotch or vodka. Do you uh, uh, drink much beer at all? Mm, not too much. Just mostly scotch? Right. Do you do most of your drinking out in bars? Usually here at the Annex or, you know, at the clubs. You don't drink much at home then? No. When you drink, uh, well, first of all, how often do you drink? I usually have a couple of bubbles every night. A couple of bubbles every night. Do you drink it uh, every day then? Yeah, I want to. Do you drink a little more on the weekends? Yeah. Uh, how much do you drink on the weekends? Oh, uh, I'd say over the weekend, probably a fifth. Probably a fifth over the weekend. Uh, well, now, well, you've got a, you're sort of a special person in our, uh, in our little experiment in that you're the only one that suffered a DWI conviction. How much did you have that uh, night, you know? Well, uh, they did a urine test and they said it was 0.35. It's about 0.15 away from death. Right. Do you have any idea of how much you drank that night? Uh, a fifth of black velvet. 
At least. At least. I see. There was a little corner left in the bottom. Corner. How often do you think maybe you've done this in the past? In the past? Before the conviction? Before the conviction. Uh, quite often. Quite often. And since your conviction? Uh, I hand the keys to somebody else. You learned a lesson. It's not worth uh, walking for a year. And I just got a bill in the mail today from my insurance company. And the insurance rates are rather high. How much do you think you can drink now and still navigate safely? It depends on who's mixing the drinks. I see. <laughs> Uh, my drinks, uh, a normal drink is two ounces, you know, in a, in a glass, but uh, I usually throw about three. So how many of those do you think you can handle and still drive safely in, say, a four-hour period of drinking? Oh, eight. Eight? So that's uh, 24 ounces? Sure. That's a fifth? I don't think that... And drive safely? I think that I can drive impaired to a point above one ounce. You think but, so? Uh, in other words, you're going to try and pull the truck. Right. I think that my uh, my tolerance is, is higher than somebody else that doesn't drink. You know. Well, we'll find out on Saturday <laughs> night, won't we? Right. We visit Joe Bashaw at his uncle's farm. The weatherman has promised thunderstorms, and Joe is trying to get his hay in before it hits. Joe is our youngest driver at 19. Hi, Joe. Hi. Doing a little hand? Yeah, a little bit. All set for Saturday night? Yeah, I hope so. You uh, think you're going to give the lie to Project Crash and drive better drunk than you do sober? I'll try. Uh, tell me, you do most of your drinking at home? No, not really. I go out up to Stub Stop over. I see. Uh, and what do you generally drink? Beer, usually. And how much of it? Saturday, Friday and Saturday night, probably 8, 9. Uh-huh. And you drink every day? Yeah, usually, at night. Do you ever drink anything besides beer? Sometimes I have a shot of liquor. Sometimes a shot. About how often do you do that? <laughs> Once a week or maybe twice. Not, m not much more than that. You ever do any little extra celebrating, like at Christmas and Easter? New Year's? Yeah, New Year's. <laughs> New Year's? How'd you do last New Year's? Bad. Bad? What did you put away? Well, we had a fifth of uh, black velvet, and then we had two cases of beer, and uh, we were going to four in the morning. I see. Who was driving? Uh, it was right. It was in walking distance. Oh, so nobody had no. to drive. Well, good. Listen, uh, we're looking forward to Saturday night, but before we take off, um, you know when we stop people on the highway, we ask them uh, some tongue twisters. Yeah. You know, earlier, I gave you ours, and you said you had one of your own. Yeah. Now, I want you to try it now, and then we'll try it again Saturday night after you've had a little bit to drink. Okay. Betty bought some butter. The betty butter Betty bought was bitter. So Betty bought some better butter, make the bitter butter better, but the bitter butter made the better butter bitter. Well, that sounds a little bit more complicated than around the rugged rock the ragged rascal ran. Uh, she shall, she shall then with the seashore. Okay, we'll try that again Saturday night, and I'll let you get back to your hang. <laughs> okay. Thanks for taking yeah, the we'll time, Joe. Yep. Bye-bye. Next, we stop in to see Roger Vincent, a 27-year-old technician. Hi, Roger. Roger has had a long-time interest in cars. Uh, what happened to it? Well, I got a couple uh, bolts that sheared off the torque converter and blowing the oil out on me, so I tore it out and find out what was wrong with it. You going to put it back? I don't think so. You gonna junk the whole animal? Junk the whole thing. Get rid of it. Turn the engine out. Forget about it, I guess. What you gonna get? I'm not gonna get anything. Sure. I got my other car, so. Oh. <laughs> you all set for Saturday night? All set. Well, what do you want us to provide you with Saturday? Oh, I think Schlitz will be good enough. Schlitz? Yeah. You usually drink beer? Yeah. Well, how much do you think we're gonna have to feed you Saturday night? Couple six packs, anyhow. Anyhow. Okay. anyhow. So we should have we should have maybe a case on hand for you. Sounds good. Okay. Have you ever have you ever polished off a case? In a day's time, yeah. In a day's time. Drive afterwards? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Had a hard time walking. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, uh, when we stop people on the road, you know, we sometimes have them do manual dexterity tests and uh, say tongue twisters and things. I got one I want to lay on you right now. Okay. Shoot. So uh, let's hear you say, "Around the rugged rock, the ragged rascal ran." Around the rugged rock, the rugged rascal ran. That's pretty good. Uh, we'll try again Saturday night and see how you do after you've had your two six-packs. Okay, good okay. enough. Yeah. Thanks, Roger. We'll see you. I managed to spend a few minutes with Sue Maynard at her office. Hi, Sue. Hi, how are you? All set for Saturday? Sure am. I understand that you made a phone call to the office yesterday. Oh, gosh, I did. You uh, decided you wanted to back out, or...? I had my doubts yesterday. You had your doubts. <coughs> now, how do you feel about being the only woman involved in this little project? Um. I don't know, when I first found out I was, it kind of bothered me a little, but I don't know, it doesn't really too much now, I guess, you know, it just doesn't bother me anymore. 
A lot of people give me hassles about it, you know, parents and stuff, but I think it's all right. I just want to find out a little bit about uh, how experienced a drinker you are, so we know how much we're going to have to provide you with. <laughs> now, uh, what do you what do you usually drink? Um, usually depends what kind of mood I'm in. If sometimes I well, I usually drink beer or something, but I like tequila. You like tequila? Like yeah. You usually drink beer. Yeah. When how often do you drink beer? Oh, a couple times a week, maybe. A couple times a week, and when you do, how much do you drink at one time? Six pack or more. A six pack or more. Tuesday nights are bowling night, and we usually go out and have a few with the girls. <laughs> and, you, and you work up a thirst, huh? Yeah. You do most of your drinking uh, out with girlfriends or on a date, or? Um, yeah, and sometimes during the day when I'm home alone, I do. I see. And when you don't drink beer, you drink tequila. Mm -hmm, usually. When you drink more than you usually drink, uh, how much do you drink? What tequila wise, you mean, or just anything? Anything. Anything. Okay, let's see. Probably about, I can drink about half a fifth of tequila and be all right, so I feel, you know. But any more than that, and I usually I get pretty drunk, I guess. And don't, I usually, like, I don't know, forget what I'm doing and stuff like that. Uh, a half a fifth. Mm. Do you, uh, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but uh, how often do you drive after you've had a half a fifth? I never yeah. drive when I drink. I, oh, you don't drive at all when you drink? Of course, you're a little bit more fortunate than most of us. You probably have somebody to drive you. Yeah. I call a cab and ask for two, dri two drivers, yeah. I see. Um, tell me you have a pretty good tongue twister that you could do better drunk than sober. You want to run through it for me? Oh. I slid a sheet, a sheet I slid upon the slid sheet I fit. Right, we'll try that again Saturday night after you've had a little bit oh of drink. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sue, thanks a lot for taking time while you're at work, and uh, we'll see you Saturday uh -huh. uh, noon sharp, okay? Okay. Dave Delurier is another driver with a real interest in cars and displays his current set of wheels in front of a friend's service station. Dave is 19 and works at a local manufacturing plant. I recently lost my license for a few days. How did you manage to pull that? Not for DWI, I hope. No, speeding violation. When did you get the speeding violation? Last November. They certainly took the time about picking up your license, didn't they? I guess they wanted to wait till uh, near vacation time, so I try to blow my plans. Just to make it a little more convenient for you. Well, let's see, you were going to drink what, beer? Stick with uh, Seagram 7. Seagram 7, and what do you got to mix it with? I think I'll stick uh, water and ice. Yeah, this is my set of wheels you got here. Well, I'll take a look at the engine. Sure. Yeah, this. So you'd rather run the power than the state car. I would like to, uh, running a little bit more horsepower, 350 horse in this engine for just a 383. What do you get for gas mileage? About 14 on the interstate and about 6 in the city. Six in the city. Six in the city. Well, it's not... Almost, almost like my blazer. Right, but it runs a little bit faster. Well, David, we're going to try, uh, you know, when we stop people on the road, we ask them some tongue twisters. And I want to try one on you now, and then we'll try it again Saturday night and see how you do. Let me hear you say, around the rugged rock, the ragged rascal ran. Around the rugged rock, the ragged rascal ran. That's pretty good. We'll try again Saturday night. Sue, Frank, Dave, Joe, and Roger come early on Saturday to practice the course in front of empty stands. All right, Susan, we're going to be running these cones over here first in the serpentine. We come through there. Now, after you get some practice, you'll be able to do it in about 25 seconds through to where that gap is. Then you take this decreasing radius curve into that simulated garage. While we're giving Sue and the others a few practice runs, let's take a look at the course. The course begins with a series of sharp curves called the serpentine. Traffic cones mark each side, and the course is especially tough because of the slant of the track. The cones are set nine feet apart and allow only one foot of clearance on either side of the car. The winding serpentine ends with a decreasing radius curve into a simulated garage on the infield. The driver must stop with his front bumper one foot from the cones at the end of the garage. Then, he must back out through the curve and stop in position to begin the high-speed lane change. It's possible to complete this much of the course in 45 seconds or less. Then, on a given signal, the driver rapidly accelerates to 30 miles an hour. When his bumper reaches the first set of cones, he's given a command on the track's loudspeaker system and by the flagman to go either left or right. He then must swerve into the proper lane without hitting any of the cones or large boxes marking the left and right traffic lanes. A state trooper rides with the driver on all runs. 
Practice is over. It's time to measure each person's driving ability in the dry runs before he becomes impaired by alcohol. Here's how the scoring works. A driver will lose one point for each cone or box knocked down, and one point for each second over the 45 second standard for completing the first part of the course. In the high speed lane change, a driver will lose five points if he either hits his brakes or goes into the wrong lane. Drivers can gain points too. If they complete the first part of the course in less than 45 seconds, they gain one point for each second under the standard 45. We'll check the dry run score shortly. Now comes the fun part. You can't show that. Though, can you? Each driver had three dry runs, and an average score has been computed. The standings look like this. Dave has the best score with a minus two, followed by Roger with a minus four, Frank with a minus five, Joe with minus seven, and Sue with minus 22. Car numbers one through five are assigned to the drivers according to these standings. Each volunteer's alcohol intake is carefully measured and plotted so that the first wet runs, just before race time, will be made with a blood alcohol concentration of about 0.05%, or about one half of the state's legal limit of 0.10% BAC. With the stands filling rapidly, the first wet runs are made. first wet run, Dave has about four drinks in his bloodstream, with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.06, and an average score for two passes through the course of minus six, compared with his dry score of minus two. is pretty light. The four drinks in his bloodstream put him up to a BAC of 0.09, and his score jumps to a minus 26, compared to the dry score of minus four. Frank, at 0.06, shows a slight loss of driving skill with a score of minus six. Joe, with a BAC of 0.05, has exactly the same score as on his dry run, a minus seven. Ah. And Sue's score drops to a minus 28 with three drinks and a BAC of 0.06. BAC shot up to 0.09. Our drivers show little loss of driving skills in the first wet run. They have BACs of about 0.05, the point where most normal social drinkers call it quits and stay out of trouble on the highway. After these runs, during the first series of races, the drinking begins in earnest, and the volunteers begin showing signs of alcohol impairment. Lane changes kill on me. Yeah. It's fine to do on the interstate if I die. From here, it looks like it comes kind of fast. Yes, it does. It, yeah. it does because it, it doesn't sound like he's doing it until about two inches before you get to the things that I thought I was going to ramp. I did. Man, the camera runs right there. He's going around and I just boom, right through it. I love it. The rest can do a lot worse. How many more do you have? Uh, I've had one since the last time. I'm going to have another one probably before I get out there again. But I think the rest are going to start catching up. I don't think they're going to be as good. Terrific. Need another boilermaker. Another boilermaker? We'll arrange it very soon. 
I'm still uh, sipping on that number one jobber, but I could use the number two job. Okay. How do you think you're going to do, uh, what do you think you can get, we can get you up to point two? Uh, hope to reach point three five. You're going to try for three five. Right. And wind up backing out of a snowbank again. <laughs> Dave's a point ahead of me, but we're going to catch him. Okay. Right. And you think you're going to drive just as well? Uh, I drove better. I think on the wet runs, time-wise, going through the S's and... Uh, Except that you knocked down more cones. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Your score was worse. It was. Oh, was well. <laughs> Joe, you, you, did the, you, did the, you did the same as you did last time, uh, the first time. Yep. But you're only 05. You're working on a little bit more now, you think? Yeah, this is about my sixth, seventh one already. Oh, I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, well, we don't want you to, to, to let us down, you know. We no, I expect to get a nice high blood alcohol. I'm trying. Yeah, you don't want any of these, uh, these city fellows to, to uh, get a higher blood alcohol concentration than you do. No, this is almost empty. I'll go on another one right now. Okay. Would, it, would you like a little add a little something to it? or? Well, don't make me no difference. I don't care. I see. You want to try that tongue twister for me again? Uh, Betty Bossom Butter. The Betty Bot was bitter. So Betty Bossom Butter Butter made the bitter butter better, but the bitter butter made the better butter bitter. You did it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you want to try around the rugged rock, the ragged rascal ran? No, around the rugged rock, the rugged rascal ran. The ragged rascal. Oh, it wasn't the rugged rascal. <laughs> the ragged rascal. <laughs> around. Uh, you know, in the week, and they come back, and you know, they're all this is like number seven, seven. You go through the park once a week, you have a paint job, right? And he comes back, and it's all sparkling new, like nothing happened. Does he ever win any races? No. I see. <laughs> in addition to recording the number of drinks consumed, each participant's actual BAC is taken on a breathalyzer prior to the wet run. All tests are supervised by the state police. It's intermission. Just before the feature race of the evening, the stands are packed and our five drinking drivers take to the track. First, we have Dave at point one three, with eight beers under his belt. Dave's dry score shows he's a good driver, but with a minus 12 average on these second wet runs, he does six times worse with this much alcohol. better than he did on the first wet run when his BAC was 0.09. Still, with a BAC of 0.12, his score of minus 20 is five times worse than his dry score of minus four. Ah. Frank, drinking Boilermakers, with a BAC of 0.13, scores a minus 19, three times worse than a score of minus five. Ah. Joe drives with the highest BAC of all at 0.14 and gets a minus 16. Tequila has the most colorful ride. because we have newsreel footage of the night before. 
most of our drivers still felt they performed rather well. You can verify it. <laughs> when you start to react, you react a little bit late, and then you overreact. You can't get back in line fast enough. Watch this one. The time before, when you hit clip the right side of the cones, coming into the lane change. Look at that. Out of the garage, yeah. <laughs> 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 I took the wrong. I took the wrong lane for You got back on the track though. I was just <laughs> Somebody else's course. Wow. Wow. What are they? Back to the wall. Roger must have been laughing his head off. Straight. <laughs> 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 Now that you've seen the runs, and we've told you the score and the ranking, anybody doubt us to the positions, to the scoring, to your ability? I, so. I myself <laughs> thought I did better on the first wet runs than I did on the dry runs, but it shows up that I did. You didn't do that bad on your first wet runs. But you were only at an old six. Right. And I remind you, that's a, just the starting of impairment. That wasn't... Uh, I felt a lot more uncomfortable driving at old six. Something you should have learned about yourselves in alcohol, not the driving part of it. Once you get under the influence of alcohol, and the influence is after four or five drinks, then the alcohol takes over. Do you remember doing as poorly as it looked on those films? I thought I was doing better. I thought. No, the first. I didn't. When I went through that last run, I thought I made it perfect, but I knocked down a whole side. It didn't. And you didn't see them? No, I thought I did it. You know, I thought I, I went right through and didn't knock down any cones, but I guess I did. Dave? When I went through it and I wiped him out, I didn't even feel it. And I asked the cop, and he said he didn't feel it either. But he was just going along with me. Because I, I felt one, and that was it. All the rest must have just been smooth. <laughs> I felt it, but I didn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> sort of numb. Well, on, the, on the last wet run, I uh, I was in back of David. David went first, and I had thoughts that I wanted to beat him to get a better score. And then I had thoughts, well, why don't I do something nice for the crowd and, and tag the wall? <laughs> but, uh, now, would you have given home under similar uh, alcohol Drinking experiences had you not been out of Catamount and not been demonstrating you can't drink and drive? Yeah, definitely. Because um, I always think that I'm more sober than I am. Or that I can hold more booze. Definitely. Sue? I don't know. Probably. I think so. Joe? I would have. You would have driven home. Yeah. <laughs> Given a choice of a taxi or a car. Your car. Probably would have driven. Not a can of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, Joe, Dave, Roger, Frank. Each of our five drinking drivers is an individual, quite a different person. But in one way, they're all alike. When they get too much alcohol in their systems and get behind the wheel, they're dangerous. They didn't know they hit all those cones until they saw the news film. As we just saw, if they had driven home, they could have been in a different kind of newsreel. The kind we see all too often of the carnage on our highways. Fortunately, all they hit were a few traffic cones and boxes, not cars or people. In fact, all of us who drink and drive are alike in this respect. Combine too many drinks with an automobile and we're a menace. On the track or on the road, few of us could have done any better than our five drinking drivers. Hey.